Hi everyone, Mary Beth Rush here, along with my fabulous lender, Nicole Ruiz of the Ruiz team at Fairway Mortgage. Joining me today for your Monday morning market and mortgage update. I need to get one more M in there. Let's put Mary Beth in there then. So <laughs> Nicole, Love thank it. you so much for taking time to join me. So I want to dive right in because March stats were just revealed, uh, yes. released, I should say. And you know, numbers were up for March. We started off March really strong in the market, but obviously, you know, we had to pivot because of COVID hit. So I'm just going to take this full screen right now and show everyone what the numbers are for March. Obviously, active inventory, you can see, is up nearly 20%. And this is month over month data. So this is March 2020 data for detached and attached homes in the Denver metro area. Closed homes up 12%. Average close price up five and a half percent, median close price up almost four percent, and the average days on MLS is the only one going down. It's down to 29 days is the average days on the MLS, and about 24 percent down. So, you know, what does all this mean? Well, it means we started off strong. We definitely started off strong in March, but like I said before, we had to pivot because of COVID. Now, what people aren't going to understand is that, well, hey, I thought the market was slowing down. People aren't selling, people aren't buying. So what you have to remember is those numbers are actually in consideration of the buyers and sellers that were working together back in January and February. You know, these are the actual deals that closed because pre-COVID, we started off really strong in 2020, right, Nicole? We did. We did. We were up six and a quarter percent uh, year over year at the end of February. So January and February. March went up to 6.75% growth in median sales price, right? So talk about appreciation opportunities. We were going and chugging along and active inventory was quickly getting swept up. Our only problem was the lack of inventory coming into March. Right. And, right. and then things did pivot, of course. Absolutely. And with that said, being the pivot point of COVID, um, I don't know if you remember this, but actually it's been one month from today when we had our first diagnosed case of COVID in Colorado. So I remember the alert coming in on my phone. It was Friday, March 6th at around like seven o'clock at night. I remember, you know, Colorado first case of COVID confirmed. So that's just, uh, I can't believe it's already been a month. But with that said, you know, now that these numbers have been released, there are also more numbers being released towards the last two weeks of March and unprecedented, what was it, 625 homes were withdrawn from the market in the last two weeks of March. That's about 44, 45 homes a day. Yeah. Um, you know, so like you just said, that's hurting our inventory. That's hurting the buyers out there that need to buy and sell right now. So, you know, sellers, it's prime time. If you still want to get your home on the market, call me. Uh, we can talk about that. So, I want to pivot again to mortgage payments, Nicole, because a lot of people are asking me questions about forgiveness versus forbearance and what that actually means. A lot of my, you know, friends and colleagues, you know, that I, in my neighborhood community members are like, oh, I just won't pay my mortgage this month. Well, that's really not what we should be doing, right? <laughs> right. It's, it's that lore, right? And there are people even that are doing the forbearance that have jobs. Because yes, I mean, 10 million applied for unemployment, right? 6.6 .6 million this past week, 3.3. And I'm sure we're not done. I'm sure the numbers will come out big again. But there are still millions of people that have jobs and much more, obviously, so that have jobs and don't. So those people need to be looking at this not as an opportunity not to pay their mortgage, but as an opportunity for those people that desperately need to um, condense their budget, right? It's made for a very specific target market it's being capitalized on by a bigger market than that. But let's talk about what forbearance means because it's right. not just, I don't have to pay my mortgage. And that's right. where that really knowing your options comes into play. So for somebody that needs to stay liquid, for somebody that has money maybe set aside, maybe or maybe not you take advantage of the forbearance. Here's the deal. <clears throat> if I do a 90 day forbearance, it means that I am not gonna make that mortgage payment for 90 days but on that fourth month, I owe for four months. I owe for the wow. three months I skipped <laughs> and the fourth current month. So say my mortgage is $2,000 a month, that's $8,000 I have to come up with or else I'm in default. And that's why it's so important for everyone who does have a mortgage payment, who does own a home, like you said before, to, to talk with your lender, talk with your mortgage provider about what, what are my options, 
what can I do? What should I do? What shouldn't I do? Because everyone's situation is different right now. There are people that unfortunately are going through health effects of COVID, yes. but then in turn, maybe going through financial effects of COVID too. So it's, it's definitely changed a lot. So I'm glad that you, uh, thank you for bringing that up and describing the difference between what those two mean. Um, I've also been, get, get, been getting a lot of feedback from people saying, oh, this is just like 2008 again. The market's going to crash. Everything's going to happen. Uh, prices are going to go down. So touch on that for me, because as a real estate agent, um, the prices aren't going to go down. Like I said before, supply versus demand. If we don't have the inventory that the buyers are demanding, then it's not going to crash. So touch on that for me. So totally different, right? Than 08. This isn't like 9-11. It's not like 08. 08, we had mismanagement of mortgage originations. And, and looking back, that, that's ever so clear, right? You had stated income, stated assets, 105% loan to values. You had spec homes and people not being able to afford those homes. Well, now we have such a different market. We have the largest amount of equity that we've ever had in our homes today, right? We have 40% of all homes don't even have a mortgage on them, and almost 30% of those homes that do have more than 50% equity. So we have a very different environment where we don't have 100%, 105% loan to values, we have 50% loan to value uh, percentages. We also have thoroughly um, eligible buyers in today's market, right? So we have all these people that, of course, before the circumstances of today, had long-standing jobs, had low debt to income ratios, had buffers in their qualifying that hopefully gives them a little bit of a buffer as we go into this period. So you have a very healthy, very stable financial market as well as housing market coming into this. Now there are some things, obviously we're watching um, the feds and the money that, that is being put out by the treasury and, and what is being funded and not funded, or what services are being supported or not supported. Every day, every day, more information is coming out, right? But what I'll tell you is, is the government knows the pain of 2008 very clearly, right? And so they're protecting the housing market. So how do we continue to take this industry that was extremely strong coming into this and allow it to continue, maybe not grow substantially, but allow it to continue and then um, just flourish as soon as we come out of this because this is not this is not an economic uh, Disruption. This is a health disruption, which right. is obviously has economic impacts as you mentioned But as soon as the health portion of this is designed with a solution Then the economic will take care of itself. Most people will go back to work most people most businesses will reopen Not all there will be a new normal but most people will be re-engaged and want to go back out to eat and buy homes and see live music and sporting events and life, right? We and want just, to go back to... And just get back together with their friends and you go yeah. out to brunch or something, so... Yes. Uh, well, Nicole, thank you so much for joining me and updating us on what's going on. And if anyone has any questions for Nicole, her number is 303-214-6393. And if you have any real estate questions, please give me a call. Mary Beth Brush with eXp Realty at 720 Eight seven eight six two three six. And Nicole, thank you again so much. I look forward to yes. catching up with you again and stay safe out there. Sounds fantastic. Thank you, Mary Beth. Bye-bye.